Standing in a tavern just south of the road to Baruva, I remember being surrounded by Fenons from Obsidian. Some were knights in the army, others were just your everyday citizens stopping to get a bite to eat or a drink after a long day's work. The battle on top of Mount Shair was just a few days prior, and it felt like everyone in the tavern that night was still feeling the effects from it, and even Fenrir itself was still recovering too. The battle took its toll on the planet, that's for sure. A part of the story that no one can question because we all felt it. The rest of the story is up for interpretation. No one was up there except Kazai and Ingvar. At this point in time, not many people had even seen Ingvar, and most of what we knew were rumors, much like the details of what truly happened up there. Some Fenon said he was a giant of a man, standing as tall as some buildings. A silly rumor to be sure, since it would be impossible to hide a Fenon that large from the rest of the world. Others said he was a beast, covered in fur from head to toe. One of the rumors I always recall is one that claimed that Ingvar was a demon, given flesh and a Fenon husk to deceive the world, and when he battled, horns grew out of his forehead and long sharp nails grew out of his fingertips. That was why not many people saw him around the king, and not many people could vouch for what he looked like when he fought. Those stories were saved for people less in the know, of course. Ingvar was just a Fenon like you and me, and he came into the world as such. Ingvar would tell you himself that he was what people on this planet would consider lowest of the low, bottom of the barrel, the worst of the worst. A bandit, a thief, a homeless wanderer, the beast rumor could come back around if we were to explain this as Ingvar fighting, biting, and scratching, tooth and nail, just for his next meal. A tall, scrawny boy whose constant fight for survival turned him into the Fenon he is today. The same fight and drive that landed him in the Obsidian army. No one knows for sure who recruited him or if he volunteered, but joining the Obsidian army at least meant a roof over his head and free meals. No intention of drawing eyes upon him, Ingvar kept a low profile, so much so that people still believed he was up to no good. His fellow knights questioned his frequent nighttime activities. You see, Ingvar would vanish for what seemed like hours every night to go into the town connected to the castle. It was thought that he was just a booze hound or enjoyed the bandit life so much that he tried to commit crimes right under the Obsidian Knight's noses. However, it was obvious those days were behind Ingvar. The stealing and the drinking was no longer amusing to him, but there was one part of his past he did miss. The fighting. While it would be too noisy to continue training so late at night in or near the castle, Ingvar found some locations in town to get his fix, and if the mood just wasn't right, or it wasn't satisfying the right itch, then Ingvar would return to taverns he once visited for drinks at the most desperate times of his life, but now he would go there to start tavern brawls. An obsidian knight responsible for starting fights was looked down upon, and after getting caught a few times, King Wellick wanted Ingvar's head on the chopping block. That is, until the king laid eyes upon Ingvar. King Wellick had never seen a Fenon so physically fit for battle, and he could understand why Ingvar was unable to satisfy his bloodlust. The king decided to keep Ingvar out of the public eye, and instead sent Ingvar on the most dangerous missions he had available. Quickly, Ingvar became King Wellick's right-hand man. While a typical obsidian knight would be lucky to survive some of these missions, Ingvar handled each one with ease most of which involved killing large monsters to bring King Wellick rare materials not found in obsidian or items very hard to come by on Fenrir in general. As Ingvar continued his questing for the king, the king's rivalry with Lord Unden of Onyx reached new heights. The two rulers, far too old to continue their feud on their own, needed warriors worthy enough to settle it for them. Lord Unden was given a legendary katana, ironically crafted from obsidian rock called Rednefen a katana said to be able to block any attack. This weapon was given to Kazai before his battle with Ingvar. On the other side, King Wellick had a legendary katana of his own, Cold Knight, a katana said to have been created the moment the wolf god of war and battle was born. This weapon was said to be able to cut through anything. The weapons and stage were set for their famous showdown. When the page turned on the Battle of Mount Shair, the new chapter that began would change Fenrir forever. 
Ingvar always assumed he wasn't destined for anything in this life. He started off with nothing and had to fight for everything he ever got, and at times it still didn't feel like enough. His life lacked meaning, and even as he did special missions for the king, he knew that one day he would meet his match and everything would fade to black. But once Ingvar returned from Mount Shair, a legendary battle on top of a magical mountain featuring two warriors wielding katanas just as legendary as they had become in that moment, Ingvar was different. Changed somehow. Like the mountain itself had opened his eyes and gave him just a glimpse of all he could accomplish. King Wellick, however, was displeased. Ingvar had failed him. A stalemate was not good enough, but the Ingvar that returned from Mount Shair no longer had patience for such a trivial matter. Two old men picking others to fight for them? In Ingvar's eyes, it was a pathetic way to rule. Cold Knight's blade would taste royal blood mere moments after King Wellick's declaration of disappointment, and despite cutting down the king, not a single obsidian knight would dare challenge him. The mantle of king now his own, Ingvar realized now why he never met his match. This was his destiny. The monster, the beast, the demon, the fenin, the king, and soon known to his followers as the God King. This legend would change Fenrir forever. <laughs>